Greetings! Let's continue our talk about hematology. Today's topic is alloimmune hemolytic anemia. But just basically an introduction. Coming up, this is Medicosis Perfectionalis. So, all of hematology and oncology are in this slide. So far, we have been talking about anemia for a long time. We are still here, but I promise we are coming. I'll talk about all of this stuff, including leukemia and lymphoma, later, so please consider subscribing. As you know, the multipotent stem cells in the bone marrow have myeloid and lymphoid stem cells. Myeloid will give us the red blood cell through many steps from blast to site. So what's anemia from a laboratory standpoint? Anemia is low hemoglobin, low hematocrit, and low red blood cell count. Usually red blood cell count is not that important. Low hemoglobin and low hematocrit, that's anemia. You don't need to have low red blood cell count on the lab results. Just both of them, you have anemia. Next step, is the anemia microcytic, normocytic, or macrocytic? We do the MCV, mean corpuscular volume. Less than 80, this is microcytic. 80 to 100, normocytic. More than 100, macrocytic. We have finished talking about this and this. We are still here. Normocytic anemia, cells are normal sized from 80 to 100. If you have anemia and this anemia has an MCV of 80 to 100, this is normocytic anemia. A normocytic anemia can be acute blood loss due to underproduction or due to overdestruction or hemolysis. We have talked about this and we have talked about all of these. Anemia of chronic disease, are deficiency, aplastic anemia, chronic renal failure, malignancy. We are done. And we are still here in the hemolytic anemia. Again, these will have low reticulocyte count. Hemolysis will have reticulocyte count provided that the bone marrow is good enough to respond and to produce a lot of cells, including baby red blood cells, which are reticulocytes. And it can be due to an intrinsic or intracorpuscular defect or extrinsic or extracorpuscular defect. Here we have hemoglobin defects such as sickle cell, membrane defects such as spherocytosis, enzyme defect, pyruvate kinase deficiency, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, or extrinsic outside of the red blood cells, such as a valve, aortic stenosis, complement called agglutinin disease because it activates the complements through IgM autoantibody, antibodies such as warm autoimmune hemolytic anemias, here we have IgG. Cold agglutinin can be both complement or antibodies, it doesn't matter. Now, immune hemolytic anemia classified into three subtypes. Autoimmune is by far the most common. You have the warm and the cold subtypes. Drug-induced hemolytic anemia, and we have talked about that. And now let's talk about alloimmune hemolytic anemia. Basically, it's a fight between the self and the non-self. So here is the big picture. But first, what does alloimmune mean? Immune is easy. Immune-related immunity. But what about allo? You have a difference between allo and auto. Okay, when we're talking about hematology or oncology, this is huge. Auto just means self, you. Allo means non-self, it's not you. If you know about transfusion, such as organ transfusion, it can be autologous, which means I'm transfusing organs or part of my body from my own, like from me and to me. Or it can be allogenic, which means I'm getting a part of a body from another person. So, auto means self, allo means non-self. Autologous transplant, allogenic transplant. So, alloimmune means you have an immune problem due to a non-self, something from outside of you. So, we have hemolytic disease of the newborn, can have different subtypes. RH disease, APO incompatibility, and others such as anti cal rhesus C, rhesus E, KID, and Duffy. All of this crazy stuff. Okay, in the next video, we'll talk about hemolytic disease of the newborn. And I'll see you then. Please don't forget to subscribe. New videos are coming. And like me on Facebook. I'm posting a lot of questions and answers there. Thank you so much.